In a previous video, we took an overview look at GitHub branches, and we considered how we can use feature branches so that we can take a snapshot of the master branch at a point in time, and then use that as a sandbox to develop a feature, and then pull the features back into the master branch via a merge and a pull request when those features are ready. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can do this hands-on using an Android Studio project as an example. Now, you'll see me using feature branches quite a bit, especially when doing training or teaching videos like this, because each branch essentially becomes its own theme, and then you can see videos that correspond with that branch, and the commits on that branch are only commits related to that specific feature. So for example, this is a prep project that I do. When I do my lecture videos, I try them out first in a separate project in a separate repository. And you can see something like the take photo branch will have commits that are only related to taking a photo. Makes it nice and concise. The good news is creating feature branches in Android Studio is quite straightforward. I'm going to create a feature branch here and I'm going to continue to expand our unit test. Now, don't worry so much about the syntax. This is Kotlin syntax, and if any of it is not familiar to you, don't worry about the syntax of what I'm typing as much as the process for creating a branch. So, if we look at the current state of our project, we'll see that there only is one branch right now, and that is the master branch, as opposed to this example other project I have where you see there are several branches. So that's our current state. Now in Android Studio, where you see Git Master, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say New Branch. And for my new branch name, I'm going to say Simple Unit Tests. And we're going to say Check Out Branch. Now watch very carefully down here. You see right now it says Git Master, but I choose OK. And you see now it says Git Simple Unit Tests. So back to our animation, this is essentially what I've just done. I've taken the snapshot and I've created a feature branch. Everything I do in that feature branch will be special for this feature branch and will not be into our master just yet. So let's add one more unit test here and let's say add four, let's say add five and three equals eight. And we'll say eight and then we'll say four plus four. Save and right click and we're going to choose git commit. Of course I could do this on the terminal as well, whichever you prefer. So we're going to say add unit test for five plus three equals eight. And I'm going to say commit and push. Now notice this looks a little different from what we've seen before. Before we saw master and then an arrow and then origin colon master. But you see now it's pushing to this new branch called simple unit tests. And once again, a before and after, you notice that the branch has not yet been pushed, so it doesn't exist yet on GitHub. Let's go ahead and push it now. And we get our success message. So let's go back and refresh our GitHub view. And we see now we have branch master, but we also have a new thing called uh, simple unit tests. Now this is really interesting because if you look at the commit history, it's specific to the branch. So branch master, the last test we have is three plus four equals seven. Now let's switch to branch simple unit tests. Branch simple unit tests, you see we have one more commit and that is five plus three equals eight. Again, back to master, not there. So we can actually switch between these two branches in our local Android Studio environment. If I wanna go back to master, I can click on master and I can choose check out. And we see our last test is four and three equals seven. If I want to go back to simple unit test, I go to simple unit test and choose check out. And we see the additional unit test uh, five and three equals eight. Now let's consider that we've made some changes and we want to pull that change back into master. So what we're going to need to do is a pull request and then a merge. We can do this easily in GitHub again. We can simply go to pull requests. We see that uh, simple unit test, it actually has our recently pushed branch and it kind of gives us a hint. It says, would you like to make a pull request out of this? Now the pull request does not actually merge anything. The pull request simply makes us eligible for a merge. And the merge is what actually draws this line and takes all of the commit history that was on this feature branch and replays it onto this master branch. So first, click compare and pull request. And we're going to say, uh, pull our unit test branch into master. And then we'll say create pull request. And this is what we like to see. Uh, this branch has no conflicts with the base branch. That means it can be merged automatically. So now we can go ahead and take that step where we say merge pull request. 
and confirm merge. And now it's taking our feature branch and it's adding it to our master. So let's go back to my plant diary queue and let's take a look at branch master and we can go to our commits and take a look. You see that the merge is a commit as well as the commit that happened on our separate feature branch. So when we do this pull request and merge, it's taking all those changes from our feature branch and replaying them onto master. Now, how do we get those changes back in Android Studio? What we need to do is let's go ahead and check out our master branch again. And we'll just confirm example unit test. You don't see the change just yet. It's still, it's still a little bit out of date. It says add four and three equals seven. And remember, the test that we did in our unit test branch is add five and three equals eight. So what we need to do is an update. Let's right click, go to get and go to repository and choose pull. What we need is a pull rather. So we'll say pull, um, all looks good. I'll go ahead and choose pull. And there we go. You see, after doing the pull, you see that it's pulled in our change for this add five and three equals eight. If you navigate to version control and then see log, it's kind of handy because you can see a visual map of our master branch so far and then we had this separate branch for simple unit tests and then we pulled in our branch uh, our unit test branch back into master so that's a look at branching let's take a look now at a more complex example let's go ahead and create a new branch and I'm going to call this more unit tests because what I want to do here is I want to start a branch that's a snapshot of master at a point in time. Then I want to realize that we need to make a change on master and I want to see how we can do that. So I choose OK. And now we're going to do a slightly more complicated unit test. We're going to say fun, confirm Eastern Redbud outputs Eastern Redbud. So what I'm doing here is I am going to make a unit test that's going to create a new uh, create a new object, populate it, and then confirm that the two string equals a certain value. So uh, don't worry too much about the syntax. We're, we're more concerned that a change is happening here. Uh, this is Kotlin, and we'll talk more about Kotlin in a separate video. So I'm going to say var plant colon plant equals plant, and I'm going to say Circus canadensis and then eastern redbud. Okay, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm creating an object of a class called plant. The problem is I don't yet have that class called plant. And that class called plant really belongs in the master branch. Uh, I I'm not in the master branch. And so we're going to see how we can solve for this. So let's say uh, plant to string. Uh, that will be uh, that will be a two-string method that we need to make. So maybe we'll say assert equals Eastern Redbud comma plant dot two string. So what we're saying here is that we're, we need to make a new class called plant and the two string method. Uh, sorry, first, the constructor of this plant should accept a genus, a species and a, and a common name and the toString method should return the common name. That's essentially what we're testing for here, but here again the issue is we don't have this thing called plant. And note that we're in the more unit tests, um, we're in the more unit test branch, so we need to go back to our master branch and add this class called plant, and then we need to merge our master branch into our unit test branch. So first, let me go ahead and commit what we have so far. And I realize this is a bit of a faux pas because you're not supposed to commit something that doesn't compile, but this is a unit test and we can take a test-driven design approach. So start our test of the plant DTO and then we'll just commit, not going to worry about pushing just yet. Okay, now let's go for more unit tests. Let's go to our master branch and we'll check out. And under Java, Let's take a look at what we have here. We'll go to My Plant Diary. I'm going to right click and say New, and we'll say Package. So call this DTO. And then inside of this, we're going to say New, and Kotlin file or class. Let's make it a class, and let's call it Plant, and OK. And go ahead, add to Git, that's fine. Now, in the land of Kotlin, it's really easy to make a DTO. We just need to say data class plant, and then we need to make a constructor. And in the constructor, we give the parameters that describe this class. So I can say var 
which just means declare a variable var genus colon string comma var species colon string so I'm declaring a variable of type species of uh, sorry a variable name species of type string and then var common of type string easy as that and that is a DTO in Kotlin now if we do need to override the two string method just like we have in Java we'll say override fun and you see it kind of gives me a suggestion here override fun to string and what we said here is we're just going to return the common name so what I can do is just return common just like that we can certainly make this more uh, advanced and we will add a lot more to this but this is enough that we can unit test by the way if you are new to, to Kotlin you'll notice that we uh, semicolons are optional at the end of a line so I can add it I cannot add it doesn't matter but uh, one nice thing is you see it's really easy to create a DTO like this so we save we confirm that we're on branch master and then we're going to go back to our project right click and choose git and commit and we'll say add our plant DTO and choose commit and there we go now we go back to our our unit tests branch and we'll check that out and let's see if we can get this thing to compile well gosh okay it still doesn't know what a plant is let's go to app in Java and we go here oh gosh look at that well you notice that that DTO package that I made does not exist and the plant class we put in that DTO package does not exist reason being I'm in the separate branch called more unit tests but note when I click here and I click on master I get some options here I can say merge into current which means take whatever commits are on master go ahead and put them into my current branch let's go ahead and choose this and wow well, look at that now we have our DTO now we have our plant uh, now let's take a look we now have an option we didn't have before which was do we want to import this class edu uc jones br my plant diary dto plant alt enter yes i do want to just for good measure let's go ahead and put the at test annotation on top of this now let's right click and choose run and we see sure enough our test pass so now what we can do is we can commit this to git and github just as we did before add a more add a dto unit test we can do a commit and push commit and push just like so and we see that we see a couple interesting things we see starter test of the plant DTO which was our first commit then it has add our plant DTO which is what we merged in from master then we have our merge from master to more unit tests and then we finished up our DTO unit test so now we choose push let me go ahead for good master good measure let's go ahead and check out master now and let's make sure that this is also synchronized so I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to choose git and repository and we'll go ahead and push master as well and push now if we go back to github we'll see something interesting we'll see that it noticed we have our more unit test branch and it's asking us to compare and pull request it notices that we've pushed this recently and says hey I bet you want to merge this into master so I go ahead and do uh, compare and, and um, uh, open a pull request rather uh, first of all let's just do a quick before and after look and see what the commit history is on both of these branches so on branch master if I take a look at the commits we'll see we have add our plant DTO if I switch this to more unit tests we'll see that it has the four commits that we saw getting pushed up in our uh, Android Studio so start of the start test of the plant DTO add our plant DTO merge the master branch and then add DTO unit test let's go ahead and compare and do a pull request now so we'll say add our DTO plant unit test into master and we'll say create pull request and once again it makes me happy it says there's no conflict so we go ahead and say merge confirm merge and now we see that's merged uh, we go back and let's go back to our repository and confirming we're on master we see it now has 15 commits so when we look at those 15 commits what do we see start our test of the plant DTO add the plant DTO merge the branch add the unit test and then finally merge our feature branch into master so this merge here was merging master into our feature branch to cap capture that uh, plant DTO update this here 
is merging that feature branch all the way back into master. And you can see here that it has replayed those last changes that I made. And of course, one more thing we know we need to do, if we take a look at our example unit test in the master branch on the IDE, we see that it's not updated yet with this merge of the unit test feature branch. So let's go ahead for good measure, do a git repository and pull, and origin master and pull. And you see, sure enough, there are the new tests that were added, and now our local is up to date. Now, what do we do with the old branches? Well, we could keep them around, or we could simply go in and say delete, whatever you prefer to do. Once you've confirmed that those changes have indeed gone from the feature branch into master, uh, you're good to go with that. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.